Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Dell XPS 13 Plus from the perspective of a visual content creator. This is a 13.4 inch laptop, which is very compact and very portable. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by Dell Singapore. In this video, I'll present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. The model number for this laptop is 9320 and is not to be mistaken for the Dell XPS 13 model number 9315 because this laptop has some designs that look quite different from the other laptop. More specifically, there are no physical function shortcut buttons. These are touch sensitive, capacitive function shortcut buttons and there is no visible boundary for the touchpad. Listed on the side here are the specifications for the base model which comes with the 12th gen Intel i5-1240p processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of SSD storage, Intel Iris Xe and a 13.4 inch LCD display with full HD plus resolution that's 1920 by 1200. The price here in Singapore is $2199. In USA, it's $1,299 US dollars. And these are the specifications for this review unit that I have here, which comes with the 12th gen Intel i7 1260p processor, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 terabytes of SSD storage, touch screen display with 3840 by 2400 resolution, and Intel Iris Xe. This, of course, is going to be more expensive, way more expensive, actually. All right, just to give you the bottom line up front, this is a beautiful, compact and portable laptop, which is powerful enough for graphic design work. You can edit videos on it, but I don't recommend editing 4K, 1080p video editing is fine. For graphic design work, 13.4 inch display, to me, it's a bit small. It's a beautiful display, just that it's kind of small, so you may want to connect an external display to the USB-C port on either side. This keyboard will take some time to get used to because there is no space between the keys. The capacitive touch buttons for the function keys work well. Please ignore the flicker because that's due to my camera settings. This touchpad is interesting because there is no visible boundary, but don't worry about that because if you can type on your keyboard without looking at your keyboard, you will be able to find the touchpad without looking at your touchpad. And this touchpad is quite big. It's accurate, sensitive, and uses haptic feedback, which works quite nicely. Light gaming on this laptop is possible, but there will be limitations since there is no dedicated graphics card. This is Hades at 1080p resolution and at this training stage, I can only get 45 frames per second. 3D graphics intensive games are not going to do well. Anyway, this is not a gaming laptop. This laptop has some downsides. The first one is this laptop can get quite warm if you push the processor. Thankfully, when you're doing graphic design work or editing photos, um, those are actually not that taxing. So the laptop is still quite cool. But if you edit videos or if something is updating in the background, this top part can get quite warm and the bottom can get quite hot. So heat is an issue if you push the processor. Just note that this really is an ultra book mostly for web surfing, watching videos, doing office type of work, not really for gaming or for video editing. The second downside is the battery life is just five plus hours at maximum brightness when it comes to streaming videos and doing light work. The last downside or limitation is there is a limited number of ports on this laptop. There are only two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, one on each side and there is no 3.5 mm auto jack. There is a 3.5 mm to USB-C adapter included and these are the other items included in the box. A 60 watt charger which is quite compact, power cable, a 1.8 meter long USB-C to USB-C charging cable. This is not a video cable so it doesn't transmit video unfortunately quick start guide and safety info. And now let's take a closer look at the design. So this is a rather slick looking design. It's quite thin, 
very compact, very portable. The build quality is excellent. It's made with metal on the front and back, and I like the textured surface on the metal. On the back, there are two long pieces of rubber feet, the fan intake and the speakers, which are downward facing. The audio quality is all right. The fans exhaust from the back. The cutting here, as you can see, is quite nice. It's a flat edge here, flat edge, actually flat edges on all four sides, but it's at an incline, so it's easy to open the lid from the front. And there is face unlock, which works quite effectively. This laptop has three display options. The base model will come with Full HD Plus resolution, which is 1920 by 1200. It's a matte non-touch screen LCD display with brightness up to 500 nits. If you want a sharper display, go with the 3.5K or UHD Plus option, which are more expensive but I would probably recommend you go with the Full HD Plus resolution 1920 by 1200 because on a small display that resolution still looks quite sharp and with lower resolution you also get better or longer battery life. So this display that I have here on this review unit is UHD Plus so all the visuals look really sharp with no pixelation noticeable and the colors look good out of the box. I measured color support for 100% sRGB, 77% Adobe RGB and 82% P3. And the viewing angles are pretty good except for the slight drop in brightness at extreme angles. There is anti-reflective coating applied on the display and it's quite effective. Just for comparison purposes, this is a tablet without any anti-reflective coating. This keyboard actually looks quite stylish to me. The power button is here, the arrow buttons are here, the keys don't have any space between them. So this will take some time to get used to when it comes to typing. There are no physical function shortcut buttons, instead there are touch sensitive capacitive buttons. By the way, the flicker is due to my camera settings. In real life, I don't see any flicker. So right now the function buttons are actually showing the shortcuts and when you press the function button, they will switch to the normal function keys. The escape key is there all the time. So these are the shortcuts you can get. We have volume controls, the microphone mute, media playback, keyboard backlight, the brightness of the display. This is the projection button, print screen, home, and insert and delete. There is function lock available, so you can press function escape to switch between the function keys and the shortcuts. And this buttons here, they work quite well. I don't have any issues with them. I actually find the touch sensitive function buttons to be quite useful because there is the label which tells you very clearly what you are using as compared to a typical keyboard where sometimes you may have no idea which mode you are in, either the function mode or the shortcut mode. The keys have good travel and feedback and the overall typing experience is quite pleasant. Just that you have to make sure your finger hits the middle of the button because there is no spacing between. If your finger is closer to the edge, it may hit the other button. But this is mostly a non-issue. During the first few days of using the keyboard, I made a lot of typos. But now that I'm more familiar with the keyboard, typos are less frequent. This bottom part here is smooth matte textured glass which feels really nice. The touchpad is between the left edge of the spacebar and the right edge of the alternate key so it's actually quite big. If you can type on the keyboard without looking at the keyboard, you will be able to find the touchpad without looking at the touchpad. The touchpad uses haptic feedback which works very effectively. By effective, I mean when you are pressing down, there is an audible click and it really feels like you are pressing down even though this thing is not moving at all. Overall performance of this laptop is smooth and quick. It boots up very fast. Switching between apps is very quick. 
When it comes to editing photos, I can get into the edit mode very quickly and also when I import photos, the thumbnails were able to generate very quickly. The transfer speed for the internal SSD is up to 6.9 gigabytes per second read and 4 gigabytes per second write, so it's really quick. And when making edits, the updates update instantly and the touchpad works uh, really well the 12th gen intel processors are pretty good so i'm not sure if there is any compelling reason to upgrade from the i5 to i7 model but that of course will really depend on the type of work you do just note that with the more powerful processor it's going to drain the battery faster i tried measuring the battery life by streaming youtube videos at 100% brightness and I was able to get 5 plus hours with this model with the UHD plus display and Intel i7 processor so if you are using a low resolution display with Intel i5 chances are you are going to get longer battery life the last thing I want to talk about is a glitch an audio glitch so right now as I'm playing this YouTube video I can hear the audio but sometimes there is no audio especially with the Opera browser with Microsoft Edge audio usually works fine but sometimes with Opera or when I'm playing games there is just no audio even though when I go into the audio settings to adjust the audio settings I can hear the audio feedback so audio the speakers definitely working just have for some programs for whatever reason sometimes there is no audio to troubleshoot i have to go into windows settings system sound properties under audio enhancement turn device default effects off and turn it on again to see whether audio works audio works most of the time but sometimes it doesn't work so each time it doesn't work i have to go troubleshoot and that is quite a hassle all right to conclude the dell xps 13 plus is a good looking performer the main issues you should take note of would be the battery life the audio issues which are software related and heat issues when you are pushing the laptop so this laptop is really for light computing tasks not really for gaming even though you can play some light games for graphic design work i think it's fine the display looks good just that it's on the smaller side so you may want to just connect an external display to it and if you want to push the processor if you want to do more graphics intensive work you may just want to connect a bluetooth keyboard and external monitor so that you don't have to worry about the heat i've pretty much covered everything i wanted to say about this laptop so you can decide whether or not this is worth your money and before you go do consider subscribing to my youtube channel so that you can get notified whenever i have new reviews up on the channel thanks for watching see you guys again bye